I know why you clicked on this video. You want to make more money as a mechanical engineer or find out how much mechanical engineers actually make. Trust me, I get it. I was barely getting by in Boston as a mechanical engineer all because of one mistake that seems so obvious in hindsight. And the crazy thing is no one warned or taught me how to avoid this mistake. Not my parents, not my professors, not even my internship. But within three years of working full time as a mechanical engineer, my salary more than doubled. And no, I didn't get lucky or utilize my connections. What I did have, however, was a strategy. So in this video, I'll break down exactly what I did so you can maximize your salary and avoid the mistakes that I made. Don't worry because this isn't generic work hard advice. These are proven steps that are guaranteed to work if you follow them. The first thing you have to do is target the right industry and company. So you might be wondering what is quote unquote the right industry and company. This may or may not surprise you, but this will be different for everyone because the right industry or company isn't necessarily the one that pays the most. It's actually the one that you're most passionate about or interested in. Remember, passion always comes first before salary. Maybe you're interested in developing spacecraft that will help humans become a multiplanetary species or saving lives with revolutionary medical products that you designed. If you choose an industry or company you're genuinely excited about, you're naturally going to put in more effort, build expertise much faster, and unlock higher paying opportunities. As a mechanical engineer, you will be solving some of the toughest problems facing humanity. And if you're not passionate about your work, don't even think about salary because you will burn out after a year or two. The salary will take care of itself if you truly love your job. If your dream industry doesn't pay well at entry level, consider working in a higher paying adjacent industry first, then transitioning later after gaining valuable experience. As a general rule of thumb, and this can vary a lot depending on which country and city you live in, but for the United States, if you're in automotive, HVAC, or manufacturing, you might be making 75 to 90K per year as a fresh grad with a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering. But for the tech, aerospace and defense, and oil and gas, you could be pulling in 100 to 120 k per year or even more. Now, two months before I was about to graduate from Tsinghua University with my Master's of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering back in 2018, and I can't believe that was almost seven years ago, I received my first full-time job offer for a Mechanical Engineer 2 position in the manufacturing manufacturing and electronics industry, developing commercial restroom solutions like those automatic flush valves, faucets, soap dispensers, and hand dryers you see in nice public restrooms. The pay was 75k per year in Boston, Massachusetts, which my naive self thought was pretty good at the time compared to the $20 an hour wage I made as a mechanical engineering intern. However, after working for about a year, my network grew and I started to learn what other engineers were making. Now, this really bothered me because everyone seemed to be making more than me. Although this wasn't the case, but somehow I convinced myself that it was. Comparison is really the thief of joy. But eventually I learned not to compare myself with others and just focus on what I could control and what I had. A nice office, friendly coworkers for the most part, and a chance to develop high quality products that millions of people use daily. I I also took this chance to build new skills. After three years of working here, my salary hit 90K per year, which was only a 20% increase from 75K. I quit my job and I switched to the tech industry in Silicon Valley as a process and product development engineer working on next generation iPhones. My salary jumped overnight from 90K to 150K simply by switching industries and gaining two to three years of relevant experience. Experience. Now, some of you might say that the cost of living in Silicon Valley is so high. Yes, things are more expensive, but the higher salary easily offsets the higher cost of living. My rent was actually cheaper in Cupertino than in Boston, and I found various ways to save. Now, it was always my dream to work in the tech industry, but it's very competitive, so I didn't want to work there straight out of school. My first job, although offered a lower salary, it taught me everything I needed 
needed to eventually land a job in tech. So it's totally okay if your first job isn't your dream job. Try to find a job where you can learn and grow and wear multiple hats. You'll get there eventually. And there are specific companies that are outliers that pay substantially more across the board regardless of your position. The ones that come to mind are tech giants like Apple, Amazon, Google, and Meta. There might also be a few medical, robotic, and consulting companies that offer similar pay. So that brings us to the second tip that you should keep in mind if you want to max out your salary. Don't stay too long at one company. Staying loyal to one company for too long early on in your career, regardless of which industry you're in, in 95% of cases will hurt your salary. Now, I'm not saying that there are no other benefits, but salary-wise, there are literally no advantages. Here's the reality. Your employer is not going to give you a 30% raise or promotion just because you work hard, but a new employer will be willing to offer a competitive salary to acquire new talent. That's why you should try to follow a two to three year rule for the first 10 years of your career if salary is one of your top priorities. Switch jobs every two to three years no matter how amazing your first company is. Plus, you won't know how truly amazing or bad your company is until you experience other companies. You can leave, gain experience elsewhere, and always come back for a higher position. A friend of mine stayed in a company for six years and his salary barely increased. Meanwhile, I switched companies after three years and doubled my salary. Obviously, job hopping will 100% get you a higher salary, but be sure you don't go overboard and switch jobs every year. That will raise a lot of red flags for employers. Now, I cannot emphasize the next piece of advice enough. Always negotiate your salary. This is the detrimental mistake I made when accepting my first job offer. I was afraid that negotiating would lead to a rejection or look bad and make the company think that I'm in it just for the money. But in hindsight, that's a ridiculous mindset to have. Most engineers are afraid to negotiate, but here's the secret. The first offer is almost always lower than what the company is willing to pay. You have to remember that HR is smart. They're going to lowball you and they expect you to negotiate. When I got a job offer that was good, but not great, I expressed interest and showed that I'm serious about the job opportunity and highlighted the value I can bring to the company, of course, in a non-arrogant way. Always be sincere. If you have other job offers, you can leverage that as well. Another trick is to negotiate other benefits too. If they won't budge on salary, paid vacation time, job title, stock options, signing bonus, and remote work options are all fair game. Some of these perks might not seem like direct money in your pocket, but they can massively improve your quality of life. Now, no matter where you work, you need to develop high impact, high demand skills. Your salary is directly tied to how valuable your skills are. If all you do is basic CAD modeling, yes, you're easily replaceable. But if you specialize in high impact skills, you become an asset that companies will die fighting for. And there are a lot of them. You can pick and choose the ones that align with your interests. Based on my experience, some skills that skyrocket your value as a mechanical engineer include computer aided engineering, which includes, but is not limited to finite element analysis, computational fluid dynamics, and multi-physics, which opens up a lot of doors. Python and MATLAB is great for high paying automation and robotic focus roles. Design for manufacture and assembly, as well as geometric dimensioning and tolerancing are indispensable for general product development roles. A valuable non-technical skill that is great for mechanical engineers to learn is project management. If you can manage teams, schedules, and budgets effectively, you'll position yourself for higher paying leadership roles. Now, the next thing is often overlooked, but can be a game changer. Get a master's degree without paying for it. Many companies will pay for your master's if it's relevant to your job. For me, I got my master's in mechanical engineering from Tsinghua University with a Fulbright scholarship right after graduating from Boston University, which led to a lot more job offers. A master's degree can push your salary into the six figure range and set you apart from the crowd. If your company won't pay for a degree, find one that will. Many tech, aerospace, and big corporations offer full tuition reimbursement. Some of the highest paying ME 
ME roles like systems engineering, computational engineering, and mechatronics all require an advanced degree. Now, before we continue, one of my favorite platforms that helped me develop valuable mechanical engineering skills and fast track my career was Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. It helps you get smarter every day with thousands of hands-on lessons in math, physics, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant breaks down complex problems with the first principles approach. Their lessons develop problem solving skills by allowing you to experiment with concepts. This method is proven to be six times more effective than traditional lecture-based learning. Brilliant's lessons are crafted by professors, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, and Google so you learn from the best. Brilliant promotes critical thinking through active learning, not memorization, so you become a strong problem solver. It also fosters the habit of daily learning essential for both personal and professional growth. Brilliant's interactive bite-sized lessons allow you to learn on the go and make the most out of your time. One of my favorites is Brilliant's scientific thinking course that teaches you to think like an engineer as you design electric circuits, gear systems, and stable bridges. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild or scan the QR code on the screen or you can check out the link in the description below. You also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now leveling up your skills and getting degrees are essential but being nice, making friends, and building a network may be even more important for landing that next high paying opportunity. Your skills matter but so do your relationships. Some of my best job opportunities came from not applying online but from people I knew. A lot of my classmates from Tsinghua University work at top automotive and tech companies and offer to give me an internal referral which would allow me to skip the pile of thousands of applicants. So no matter if you're in school or industry, always go to networking events, be active on LinkedIn, and build relationships with people. Whether it's getting a raise, promotion, or job offer, connections open doors, that skills alone can. Now the last tip is about having a side hustle. Make money outside of your nine to five job. Your job shouldn't be your only source of income. I built a multiple income stream on the side and it gave me the freedom to take risks and find a job I truly love even if the pay wasn't the highest. Depending on your interests and skills, you could freelance and provide CAD or FEA services, start a 3D printing business, get into technical writing or consulting, and even start a YouTube channel. Whatever you do, try to build income streams that generate passive income over time. That way, you have more time to yourself and can focus on what matters the most. Now, I'll end by saying that wanting a higher salary is natural. If you do follow the steps that we talked about, the money will come. But at some point in your life, you should ask yourself what all that money is for. Money can buy you a lot of things, but it can't buy time, good health, or genuine relationships. Instead of having the mindset, oh, I need to make more than this person or that person, or chasing a number, focus on what that money enables you to do. Whether it's creating, exploring, spending time with loved ones, or simply living on your own terms. Because in the end, wealth isn't about how much you make, it's about how well you use it. All right guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I reenact how mechanical engineers spend their salaries and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.